evaluate this guy here, and you remember this is um, this is our NCR notation, which we also write like this. That would be the equivalent, okay? Same, same deal, right? Evaluate that from one up to n, one all the way up to n, okay? So that would be that would be uh, nc1, nc2, nc3, nc4, da 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 da, da all the way up to m, c, n. Okay, that's what we're actually trying to do. In fact, it's worth probably just jotting down that that's what I'm trying to do as a strategy, right? That's nc1, nc2, nc3, all the way up, up until m, c, n. Okay, so you've got your first term here and your last term there, okay? So this is what we are trying to evaluate. Now they actually, honestly, they give you an enormous clue because this part here on the end is not required to solve the problem. It's them prodding you and saying, hey, remember, remember, the reason why these guys, these guys are important is because they appear in the expansion of this, okay? So just to jog your memory, right? If you think of just the classic example, you know, x plus one, x plus one squared, x plus one cubed, and four will be far enough, okay? If you just think about your Pascal's triangle, okay? This is just x plus one, right? So your coefficients are one and one, no big deal. When you expand this guy, you get x squared plus two x plus one. So your coefficients are one, two, one. You go down to the next row, help me out. One, three, three, one. Yeah, there's the one, there's the three, there's another three, and then there's the one trailing on the end. And if you go one more row down, you're gonna get four, six, back to four because it's symmetrical, remember? And we finish with one, okay? Doesn't take you much to go and do, that'll be one, five, uh, 10, 10, 5, 1, etc. Okay? You don't tend to see them very often unless it's like on some multi part question. This is multiple choice, so that's why they, they kind of just leave it open. Right? Now, being that you can see this pattern for me, okay, when they give you something like this, it's like, oh, I don't know where it's going to end. That's one of the strategies we use to make things harder, right? It's introducing more algebra. If I just said 3, Right? Just go up to three. That would be easy. You don't need to really apply that much thought. You just go up to three. You add them all up. Right? These guys correspond to these coefficients, and out pops your number. Okay? So the fact that this, algebra, this is algebraic is a bit harder. Okay? Now have a look with me. Okay? These coefficients that are written in there, I'm actually just going to write the coefficients out. Right? This is the, um, which row of Pascal's triangle is this? One. It's the, it's a bit funny, right? It's row number two, if you're just counting one, two, three, four, but it's actually, it is the first row, right? It's for n equals one, okay? So what are the actual coefficients that give me one and one? One and one. Now, by using this NCR notation, right, you may remember, we call them one C one, uh, sorry, one C naught and one C one. Okay? It's a bit weird, isn't it, to say you're choosing nothing, but that's why these n terms are always 1. Because how many ways are there to choose none of my whiteboard markers? And the answer is, there's one way to choose none of them. No matter how many whiteboard markers you're holding, there's one way to choose none of them. So all of the first ones are called 1c0. It's, well, they're, ch they're called whatever c0, right? So this number up the top is which row you're on. Okay. So then when we go to the next one, you're going 2C0, 2C1, 2C2, right? There are, there's only one way to choose none out of two. There's only one way to choose two out of two, right? If you only can choose two. And how many ways are there if you've got two to choose from to pick one of them? Answer, one way, two ways, right? Hence, two, okay? Now you can see the pattern that's forming, right? So you've got... Uh, sorry, this is the third row, 3C0, 3C1, 3C2, 3C3. Okay, you're getting the idea. Now how this relates to this is they want a sum. They want a particular sum. Okay? So let's try and follow this pattern and see what's going on. Right? When I add up these guys, that's just 1 plus 1. 2, no big deal. Okay? When I add up these guys, I'm adding 1 plus 2 plus 1, which is 4. And then when I add up these guys, I'm doing 1 plus 3 plus 3 
plus 1, which is 8. So the pattern has formed. Okay, you see the pattern? Okay, now therefore, you can rewrite these numbers as 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed. In other words, it's 2 to the n if, if, careful, not at the answer yet. It's 2 to the n if I add up all of the items in the row. Does that make sense? I've got to add them all up. Okay. Now look carefully at the question. Read carefully. Is the question asking me to add up all the terms in the row? I don't even know what it's no. asking. And the answer is it's missing one. Yeah. Look, I wrote it out here, right? And see, one, two, three, four, all the way up oh, to eight. Zero. Zero. I'm missing zero every oh, time. Okay? Now, of course, the first time, the first term in each row is always one, yeah. right? So, therefore, I'm not two to the n. We call this a distractor. Yes. <laughs> right? I'm actually not kidding. Multiple choice question design is a big deal, and they're called distractors. Because you think about this, right? So you can see here's the answer, right? If this was the actual answer, and all the rest of the answers were like, you know, I, I don't know, like minus one and two hundred and fifty-six and, and, and nineteen, okay? Then you're like, well, I don't know. They're obviously if you take a different approach to doing this, you can plausibly end up with zero and one, which are also. Incorrect. But there's always two, which are going to be like the same but one thing different, and you know it's going to be one of. That's true. So anyway, th this is the better distractor, as you can see. Okay, um, it's even put up the top of the question to troll you even further, okay? This is really what they're doing, because every time, if we wipe all these guys off, you're always one short. You won't have two, four, eight, you'll have one, three, seven, 15, etc. Okay? Yeah, also, every single time that you take the first term, the first term's always one. Correct. Therefore, you take one off. That's exactly right, yeah. Um, one C naught, two C naught, three C naught, anything C naught, it's a little bit like, um, these are always equal to 1, in much the same way that, you know, these are always yeah. equal to 1, assuming, assuming this. Okay? <coughs> Anyhow, right? So it's, it, that identity, right? Can I be honest with you? I didn't know. <laughs> like when, um, who, who brought this to me? Mom, was it you? Yeah. yeah. I looked at this, and I knew it was one of these answers, but I didn't know straight away. I had to think a little bit. I had to go through this process in my head. Now, admittedly, I can do that faster than you can because I've been doing it for longer, but it's still the same idea, right? I actually, honestly, would think that going through that process is better than just memorizing this. Because right? if you memorize this, there's just as much of a uh, possibility that in the, the exam they give you that. And then you're like, wait, which one is it? And if you understand, then you'll get the right one. Okay, yeah. um, so what is this question verbally saying, like in words? Sure. Um, Evaluate the sum of all the terms that look like this, but I don't just want one of them. I want the the one where k equals one, and the one where k equals two, and the one where k equals three, all the way until it's m, and then stop. That's what sigma notation means. 